Probably the biggest lie I think Trump told the American people when he was running for president in 2016. One of the greatest lies of the Trump era is that the economy has never been so good, that the economy is working better now under his leadership for the American people than it ever has in American history. That is one of the biggest lies, that trickle-down economics, the idea that was founded by Alan Greenspan under the, uh, the presidency of Ronald Reagan, that somehow when you give all of the benefits and all of the money to the corporations as they viewed them as the employers, that somehow that money would trickle down to the little people. And I want you to look at this. I want you to look at this chart. This says it all right here. This is genius whoever came up with this, right? So let's just look at it and study it, right? And, and, and that's, the whole, that's the whole thing right here. Quantitative easing, the idea that we give, we print money, give it to the corporations and banks to dis, dis, uh, disperse it among the little people, right? The 1%, give them the money and have them make loans uh, lend out, lend the money out, right? Handle the housing markets, handle everything, right? All of our, our credit cards, every way that Americans spend money, let's give it to the corporations, and that they could, they could, uh, they'll disperse it for us. They'll do the job for us, right? Because we're government. What do we know? Let's give it to the businesses that do it. Right? So look at the chart, right? So this is how it was how it was intended to work, right? So do you ever see when you pour, like when you stack glasses and you pour into the top glass and then the it overflows and then that fills up the glasses below it, right? That's the idea. That's the, the concept of trickle-down economics. That's the actual analogy of trickling down the, the, the contents of what the government is feeding you. Right? That's the theory. Right? But what happens is, as you can see in the chart, right? this is how it used to be. You got a big bottle that would fill all of the glasses. Right? That's, how it, that's how it was supposed to be. Where you give it to one, and then the one, they get it first. Okay, they get it first because they're calling the shots, allegedly. They're in the, they're in the employee position. They create the jobs, right? And instead, you know, and so in the chart, what would happen is if you did this, as the glass overflowed, there's plenty of liquid, in this case, wine in the glass, that would fill all of the glasses equally, right? It would fill maybe a little more in the big, in the top, but everybody would get some wine, right? Everybody would get some wine, some, right? And then, but what really happens is this, right? You pour... The, see how the bottle is getting smaller? Now it's a smaller bottle. Right? Now it's a smaller bottle. That's not going to work. It's a smaller bottle, but the glass is getting bigger. Ah, greed. Right? The greed, the corporations, they open up, they, op they widen themselves, right? And even if it did overflow, because there's not really much in the glass... Even if it did overflow, it would only probably hit a little bit. You get some drips and drabs into the top, right? And that's how it's been for 30 years, right? Very little drips out, right? And, um, right, so, but now here we are. This is where we are now. This is, this is 2019. You see how the bottom of the glass completely covers, it's like an umbrella. It, it doesn't, it covers completely Completely, I love this, I love this. Whoever did this, positive money, thank you so much. Completely covers the glasses underneath it. Look how fucking big their glass is. You, look how greedy, that's what greed looks like. You see how big, big the glass, it just takes everything and there is no trickle down, right? Because there's really not even, there's not enough anymore because of the size of their glass See, and our glasses are getting smaller. Our glasses got even smaller, right? This is the 99% of the people, and this is the 1%. And this is stupid government 
under the you know the the fiat money system, printing money, giving it to the to the corporations and the banks to trickle it down to the little people. And not only is it not trickling down, but you could see it's on the back of the little people, and they're getting littler and smaller <clears throat> until what? Until it crushes, and that's a crash, right? Where the where the where the, the billionaire class is getting so fat and so heavy that it's and it's standing on the shoulders of the little people that eventually it just crashes down and crushes them. That's where you are right now. That's where Trump is. The Trump idea is there. Why is that? I don't understand. I, I will never understand why people will accept less and envision that somehow they're getting more, right? Is it social issues? Okay, yes, social issues, the guns, the, the free speech and all that, but has Trump done anything at all for free speech? He's prosecuted Julian Assange. Right? Under his administration, he's prosecuted Julian Assange, the great journalist who told us about the United States war crimes in Iraq, in Afghanistan, and on and on and on. He told us about how, how our government cheated us in 2016 in the 2016 election, and so much more. So where is Trump draining a swamp or working on behalf of the American people to clarify free speech? How is he making your life better? How, how, is, how is that? And why, why would those folks venomously reject a campaign, a direction of we the people, where we eliminate the oligarchy, the billionaire class, the giant wine glass sitting on our shoulders, taking all for itself and trickling down none? Uh, why, would, why would a, you know, a, a, a candidate, for example, Bernie Sanders, running and saying that, and has been saying it when it was all the way back here in the 80s, and this started to happen in the 90s, and now here we are on the Bush, right through Obama, it just got worse. And now Trump, it's on steroids. Why would, why would people reject that notion of transforming the, the way that government operates? I see there's, there's plenty of wine, right? That wine could fill everybody's glass. Even though our glasses got smaller, we'll take a little, but we get nothing. We are completely cut out of money, the way money flows, credit, right? When you have a lot of money and you have a lot of uh, 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 credit, money is easy. Money is free. Money is cheap. You take money here. You put money there. You move money around and you shave off a little bit and you make a living. When you don't have money or, or then you don't have credit, you have nothing. You have no, you, you, the only thing you have is, is the skin on your back. And once that skin stops moving forward, you got nothing. Right? You, 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 you're absolutely screwed. So a great, great, um, this is quantitative easing. The idea of quantitative easing is the wine glass where the government gives the money. But in reality, this is, this is our economy. This is a snapshot of our economy right here. Right? That, this is where you are right now. Right? So that's, that's, that's what's on the line in 2020, in, in the way I see it, right? So as the centrists come in, if Hillary Clinton comes into the election, and Joe Biden, and now we got Mike Bloomberg, chapping, you know, yakking away, I'll run for president, I got $2 billion to spend. Hillary Clinton will steal two billion, right? Or uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden's on his knees. Joe Biden's walking on his knees into Wall Street. Please give me two billion. I need two billion to run for president. I'll be, I'll be your guy. You can vote for those shit sandwich, shit, shit sandwiches that are calling themselves centrist Democrats, that are gonna, that are going to continue the idea of trickle down economics forever and ever. So if you get one of those, you've got nothing more than what Trump is giving you right now, which is absolutely nothing. 
it's not even crumbs anymore. It's not, not a drip, not a drab, not a drop getting into your cup right now. I understand that. That's the, that's the biggest, that is the problem of our time, that the corporations have sucked all, all of everything, all of our livelihoods and all of our potential sharing of the wealth of this country for themselves and put it in their pocket. And that's what's on the line right now in 2020 in this election. Marcus Conti reporting.